Okay, so about two years ago, I made a video about the design system that I'd created in Figma for the ConvertKit marketing site. And since then, a lot of great features have been introduced to Figma that make creating components more powerful and make it easier to set up a design system, but um, I haven't implemented any of them. In fact, if I'm being really honest, which like, why not? I suppose I should be. Um, I haven't really made many improvements to the design system at all since then. It's very outdated now, it's not serving our needs, and as creative director, that is obviously something I need to work on. So I'm sure I'm gonna share a lot more of the process of creating an updated version of the system in future videos and also over on my Twitch channel as I work on it, but right now I'm kind of in learning mode where I'm figuring out best practices for website design systems and uh, seeing what other people do. And the other day I was interviewing Matt Plays, who is the lead brand designer at Help Scout for my show Inside Marketing Design, plug plug. Um, and there was one point in the interview where he went deep on explaining the spacing component that him and the team had created for a new Help Scout project. And I was fascinated. <laughs> it's the exact kind of nerdy detail thing that I want to be learning about right now. And so I wanted to share it with you as well. So this is Matt explaining the component as part of their approach to the design of In The Works. We front loaded this project with a lot of design system work. Um, so as soon as we got our brand direction approved, we started uh, creating a design system in, and library in Figma. Another really useful tool, it's kind of a, a totally in the weeds thing, so I hope the audience is ready for it. We're ready for in the weeds. This is the point of the show. Go for it. <laughs> One uh, really cool component that I I worked on um, was just this spacing unit um, component. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to standardize our, our spacing throughout the project so that way we could just stay consistent and not have to juggle values mentally or have them documented. We were actually using a component. And so the component has so many wild variants. I found this old blog post by um, a studio called The Scenery and they were somewhere out in the Midwest and they talked about using the okay. Fibonacci sequence for their spacing units. So it would be uh, the two preceding units equal the next. So if one oh, is yep, yep. 10, the next is 20, uh, the, the following one is 30, the following one is 50, you know, and so on. What that ends up doing is it creates like meaningful gaps between them. And I found that makes decision making easier. One spacing unit, hmm. when you're talking 160 versus 100, one is right, one is wrong. Uh, right. Those are big differences. You can easily tell like what is the appropriate thing to do. So we did that as our base um, for sort of a desktop viewport. And we actually then multiply that by a ratio. This is where I kind of added to that idea. On mobile, we halved that. So those units hmm. were halved. And on extra large screens, those were multiplied by a factor of like 1.25. And what that enabled us to do is, is basically we had these, these checkpoints where pixel values are super round and we can create comps for them. But ultimately we created a set of variables that developers used in, uh, in code as CSS variables that we were able to just really reference semantically. So we could say like, this is a medium, this this like this grid mm -hmm. has medium gaps. The padding of this section is large. Like, and we got to be really, really consistent with that. It was a lot of front end work, but I think what that ended up doing was it gave us all the same pieces to work with. So we're creating components with auto layout, zero spacing, and we're literally using these spacers in our auto layouts. There's a toggle. If you want to toggle them on for visibility or off, you can do that as well, which is kind of cool. But that enabled us all to stay in sync. And then it made delegating components hmm. really, really easy to do. Matt shared loads more details about the system and about brand and marketing design in general at Help Scout in the episode. So you should go and head on over and watch that or, or listen to it. If you'd like to hear more, you can get it on the Inside Marketing Design YouTube channel, which I think cards are in this corner or, or just search for Inside Marketing Design in your podcast app. But I always love when I get to take a look inside another designer's Figma files. We can learn so much by seeing how our peers solve problems and how they do their work. So if you're needing to create a system in Figma for a marketing website yourself, I hope that you'll come on this journey with me as I figure it all out and share with you what I'm learning along the way. Step one for me, I think, is gonna be doing an audit of our site. So I'll probably share a video about that, about the results of it. And then it'll be time, obviously, to start systemizing our pixel values like Matt did, as well as 
all of our components. It's going to be a big project. Please do head on over and watch the full interview with Matt. You can click on it right here. I think you really like it and I'm really proud of it. So thanks in advance for tuning in and I will see you in a future video. Bye.